A very good day to you. This morning, we continue with our focus on the cross of Christ, the magnetism of the cross. In the Gospel according to John, chapter 12 and verse 32, we read these words of Jesus. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. To understand this statement, we need to understand that in Hebrew idiom, to be lifted up means to be crucified. Now, that is to say the least a very strange statement. A crucifixion was the very opposite of attractive. It was the most repulsive, ugly, terrible form of execution the Romans could dream up. If anything, it would turn people away. And in addition for the Hebrews, to be crucified was to be cursed. And yet, Jesus says, I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men to myself. How can this be so? Firstly, believe it or not, it appeals to our understanding. Many of you saw the movie, The Passion of Christ, quite a few years ago. I believe that this movie convinced thousands of Muslims of the truth of the Christian gospel. In this terrible portrayal of the crucifixion, they understood the suffering, the sacrificial love of God towards men and women. Well, Jesus says, If you have seen me, you have seen the Father, and I and the Father are one. When we survey the wondrous cross, it awakens within us our own shame and guilt. In this sacrificial, suffering act of love, God stopped speaking and did something. It is an act, not an airy-fairy abstract thought or philosophy, but action. James in his letter says, faith without action is dead. In the cross, God acts in an amazing demonstration of love. Yes, the cross appeals to our understanding. Secondly, the cross appeals to our dignity as human beings. Have you ever thought of the dramatic contrast between coercion <clears throat> and persuasion that confronts us on Calvary? On the one side, the Roman Empire, one of the mightiest concentrations of compulsive power in history. And on the other, Jesus saying, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. Lift me up, even though it be upon a cross. Make visible my quality of life and love and sacrifice. And in the long run, the hearts of men and women will respond to it and I will draw all of them to myself. This contrast has terrific reality in our world today. The military strike by Russia on Ukraine, the threat of nuclear and chemical warfare, the violence of suicide bombing, such as the 9-11 attack on the Twin Towers on the one hand, and the gospel of sacrificial love on the other. We can apply this truth to many areas of life. Take a criminal committed to prison, embittered, rebellious, angry, cursing God and man. He can never be coerced out of his criminal ways. You can imprison him for years, put him in solitary confinement, starve him, beat him, do anything you like to his body, but you can never conquer his spirit, just because he is a human being and not an animal. Nothing conquers that man until he surrenders inwardly to the gentle and gracious and irresistible force of persuasion. In the slums of London in the 1800s, General Booth of the Salvation Army dealt with many such hardened characters who believed in neither God nor goodness. Someone has said that we cannot make living things grow with a sledgehammer, no matter how hard we pound. Is it not true that whatever is finest in our character was not flogged into us, 
but was drawn out by the sight of something lovely and good and sacrificial to which we responded. When I was in Standard 6, Grade 8 today, I was caught cribbing in a Latin class. The teacher, who happened to be the school chaplain, called me into his study and I thought I was going to be sent to the housemaster for four or six of the best, caning. But instead he said to me, your dad and your grandmother would not like to know about this. Don't ever crib again. And I never cribbed again. In latter years, he and I built up a very special relationship in ministry. The human heart cannot resist such gracious and loving appeal. And that is what draws us like a magnet to Calvary. We could fight a God who took us by the scruff of the neck and tried to coerce us, who overawed us with his thunderbolts and frightened us with his prophecies of punishment. But what are we going to do with the strange God who hangs on a cross, this God who treats us with such infinite respect, who divests himself of heavenly glory and meets us on our own level, who comes to us and says, I have a great purpose for you, my child. I want you to live a life in my kingdom, a life in friendship with me. But I shall not force you into it. I shall reveal this life before your eyes. I shall hold it up before you in all its purity and attractiveness. I shall appeal to you from a cross. Yes, the cross appeals to our dignity as human beings. We'll continue with this scene next Monday. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you again and again for the magnetism of the cross that draws us so wonderfully to the power of your sacrificial love in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Help us to always have the cross before our eyes as we deal with the problems of corruption and violence in the world around us. In Jesus' name, Amen.
power of the love of Jesus Christ on the cross be seen in you, so that you may be a blessing to all those whose lives you touch day by day. Amen.